In this problem, it's important to note right from the start that the graph we're being given is the velocity curve. And we know a few things about this, namely, this is the particle moving along the x-axis. So we see that it has negative velocity from time 0 to 3, positive velocity from 3 to 5, and negative velocity from 6. We're also given the areas of these regions. So this area here is 8, this area here is 3, this area here, and just to clarify that ends right here at 6, is 2. Finally, we're given an initial position. We know that the x value at time t equals negative 2, I'm sorry, at time t equals 0, We're also given the x value at t equals 0 to be negative 2. That's going to be our initial condition. So in part a, we're looking over the time interval from 0 to 6, and we have to find the time and the position of the particle when it is farthest to the left. Well, let's... Uh, Let's think about that in terms of this diagram. The integral of this velocity function will give us the position as a function of time up to a constant c. And then we can use the initial condition to fill in that constant c. So notice what is happening in a qualitative sense. We know that the particle is moving to the left from 0 to 3. In fact, we know how far it moves to the left. It moves 8 to the left. Then from 3 to 5, the particle moves to the right, and it moves a total of 3 units to the right. Finally, in the uh, interval from 5 to 6, it moves an additional 2 units to the left. And so, we can calculate that the position at the end of each of these intervals, namely the position where the velocity becomes zero, that's the location of relative minima and maxima and of the position. And so let's calculate what's happening at these three points, the two places where the derivative is 0, as well as here at the two endpoints. Those are the potential locations for being farthest to the left. So we know, first of all, that x of 0 is negative 2. That's given. Now, what about x at 3? Well, that's x at 0 plus the integral from 0 to 3 of v of t. And we know this to be again this is negative 2 from the previous. This subtracts an additional 8 and so we have that this is negative 10. We'll use that value as our starting point to find x5. Uh, so we have x5 as x3 plus the integral 3 to 5 of v of t dt. And what numbers do we have for that? Well, we just found out that x of 3 was negative 10. The integral from 3 to 5 we're given as plus 3. And so we put those together and we see that the position here is negative 7. Lastly, we'll find x of 6. 
that's going to be x at 5 plus the integral 5 to 6 of v of t dt. Again, we have the starting value from the previous. We know that this is negative 7. We know that this integral from 5 to 6, because we were given the area, is an additional negative 2. And so this puts us at negative 9. So we can see among the three choices of locations and times where we're farthest, potentially farthest from the left, namely from these three choices, that this is farthest. And it occurs at t equals 3. So in part b, what are we finding? We've got to find how many values where the particle is exactly at x equals negative 8. Well, here it's important to understand that because the velocity is negative from 0 to 3, over that entire interval it's negative, we know that from 0 to 3 the position is steadily, or rather monotonically, moving towards the left. From 3 to 5 it's monotonically moving towards the right, and from 5 to 6 it's monotonically moving towards the left. So that means that First, it passes between the location x equals negative 2 to negative 10. So somewhere between um, we know that somewhere between t equals 0 to 3 that somewhere between uh, t equals 0 to 3 that x equals negative 8 and that it only occurs once because of the monotonic nature of the change in position. We know that once between um, we know that once between 3 and 5 it passes between the values negative 10 down to negative 7, and so it also must pass through x equals negative 8. And finally, we know that somewhere between 5 and 6, it moves from being at negative 7 to being at negative 9, and so somewhere in between there, it must pass between negative 8. And so we know that for precisely three values of time, it m must be exactly at the position x equals negative 8. C is simply asking us to decide whether speed is increasing or decreasing. Now, we know that by comparing the velocity and the acceleration. We know that if the velocity is uh, positive and the acceleration is positive, that the speed is increasing. Similarly, if the velocity is negative and the acceleration is negative, the speed is increasing. And again, these are absolute values uh, I'm sorry. However, what we also know is that if the signs of velocity are op of velocity and acceleration are opposite each other, namely if v is minus and a is plus or v is plus and a is minus, 
then the speed is decreasing. So what's the case? They're asking us specifically about the situation from 2 to 3. From 2 to 3, the velocity is clearly negative, and yet we have a positive slope. The slope is the acceleration. So we have negative velocity, positive slope, and so the speed we know to be decreasing. Lastly, part D asks us where the acceleration is negative. This is the easiest part of the question because the curve they've given us is the velocity curve and so the various slopes, the various slopes of the tangent lines constitute the acceleration. And so it really is just asking us where is the acceleration or in other words where is the slope of this line negative. Okay. Well we know that the slope is downward between 0 and 1 and that it becomes exactly 0 right at 1. And so the first interval we know where the acceleration is negative is between 0 and 1. Here the slope is positive, here the slope is positive. We know the slope is exactly 0 here at 4 and then we see that that continues downward so we conclude that it's also A negative acceleration between 4 and 6. So in both of those situations, both here and here, we have negative acceleration.